So we are in the thick of a campaign season and political parties are not the only ones at work. So anyone who spends more than $500 on election related activities must register with Elections Canada as a quote unquote third party. Currently, there are 73 third party groups that are registered this election cycle. For more now on what they can and cannot do during an election, we are joined by lawyer and author of the Democracy Law blog, Clayton Whitman. Good to have you with us this morning. Let's break it down into the what, these third party groups. What can they do? So uh, third parties um, are, uh, they have the right to expression, uh, just like all Canadians. So. Um, typically what uh, these third parties are doing uh, in uh, trying to influence how Canadians are voting. Uh, they're uh, often engaging in paid advertising. Uh, so you might uh, start to see uh, ads um, on, on TV, on the radio, uh, on the internet um, from groups who are uh, trying to convince Canadians how to vote. Um, but they can also engage in other uh, partisan advocacy during an election campaign. Uh, so that can include uh, organizing political rallies, uh, conducting election surveys, uh, and get out the vote efforts. So different uh, uh, paid activities to, to try and influence how Canadians are voting. As uh, we're sort of looking at today, let's look back at the last federal election in 2015 to take a look at who spent the most as third parties. So the United Steel Workers, which is a steel workers union, they actually spent the most. They were then followed by Let's Build Canada, which is a coalition of construction unions, and Canadians United for Change, which is backed by an international engineers union. These are very large. They're very well-funded organizations. So how does Election Canada then take a look at their budgets and then limit how much influence they can actually have on an election then? Yeah, so um, during an election campaign, uh, this political expression of these third parties is regulated. Um, and, it's, and it's regulated in four ways. Um, first, as you mentioned, there are spending limits on how much these third parties uh, can spend on their political advocacy during a campaign. Um, and uh, those spending limits are uh, about uh, $4,300 uh, per each particular riding uh, is the maximum they can spend. Um, and overall, during the entire campaign itself, uh, it's approximately $511,000. So one, uh, there's an overall limit on how much these third parties can spend. Um, also, as you mentioned, there's a requirement to register with Elections Canada once they've spent $500. Um, and by registering, they need to provide some basic information about the third party, uh, who the third party is, who are the people behind it, and some contact information for that third party. Uh, and that's a way for uh, Canadians to understand when they see these ads that are brought, by, uh, brought to them by a third party, who that third party is. Um, in addition, when uh, third parties are running uh, election advertisements, uh, they're required to add a note to that ad uh, that says uh, who has authorized the ad and uh, some contact information. And, and finally, there are some financial disclosure requirements on these uh, third parties. So uh, they need to file reports with uh, Elections Canada that, uh, that shows where they're receiving, uh, what the source of their funding is, and how they spent those funds on their political advocacy during a campaign. A great information. We hope that this is going to help uh, the electorate get as educated as possible uh, to understand how they work. Clayton, thank you so much for uh, guiding us through that process. Yeah, thanks for speaking this morning. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.